Hey guys, today I will be talking about skins and accents on Flight Rising, what they are, and how to make your own custom skins for Flight Rising. Um, this video will assume that you already have an art program that you're familiar with and will just mainly focus on Flight Rising's rules and guidelines with regards to skins and accents instead of the actual step-by-step um, -step process on how to brainstorm and sketch ideas for your own custom skin. So if you would like to watch a video that focuses more on concept and ideas, then perhaps you might be interested to check out one of my other videos, Flight Rising Skin Contest Tips and Tricks. However, if you would like to just have a simple overview of what skins and accents are, um, some of Flight Rising's guidelines for making them, then let's just jump right into this video. So first of all, what are skins and accents? Well, Flight Rising defines skins as user-created items that apply a unique coat of paint or isolated design to a selected dragon, and they are applied much like a piece of apparel and will not affect the genes of a dragon when it breeds. So basically, skins and accents are a type of equipable item that your dragons can wear. Um, they are similar to apparel in that your dragon can equip or unequip them at any time, but the difference is that most skins are user-created and have certain restrictions that apparel items do not share. So skins also must be submitted to the flight racing staff for approval before being accepted as a skin that other players can use on flight rising. Um, skins are mainly divided into two types based on their percentage coverage on a dragon. Um, the first kind are just called skins, which are basically skins that have a percentage coverage of over 30%. So anywhere between 30% to 100% um, percent of coverage, those are called skins. And... Um, Okay, and accents are basically the opposite. Accents are skins that have a percentage coverage of 30% or less. And those will be called accent. Um, I know it's a bit confusing. Why don't they just call it um, entirely different things? You know, accents are also a type of skin. But, you know, uh, just remember that skins over 30%. Accents under 30 percent um occasionally you might also hear the term skin scent being thrown around by some other users um the term skin scent doesn't really mean anything when it comes to flight rising submission process but the term basically refers to accents that look like skins so a skin scent would be a skin that has a percentage coverage of 30% or under, but it looks like it has a much higher percentage coverage than it actually has. Now that you have a basic understanding of what skins and accents are, it's time to start making them. So you will need the Photoshop files of the Flight Rising Dragons to get started. And these files can be found in the sidebar of Flight Rising. So underneath the shop, subheader just click on custom skins and once the page has loaded you'll click on download psds and you will be brought to a page with all the available dragon breeds that you can make skins for um note that male and female dragons of the same breed will have different poses so just click on any of the images of the dragons you'd like to draw the skin for and your download should start immediately. Um, the downloaded file will be in a .psd format, and um, since most art programs should be able to open Photoshop files, just open the file using your chosen art program, and you should see the base, shadow layers, and line art for the dragon. Um, I prefer using the first file because it also has a pre-made folder where you can draw your skins and accents on, but either of the files should work. Now you can start drawing. Um, of course, there are some rules and guidelines you have to keep in mind when making your skin, and I'll do my best to walk you through them. So first of all, the most important thing is that your design must not go outside of the dragon. Uh, regardless of what your design is, everything 
must be contained within the base of the dragon. And that's probably the most important rule in skin creation. So to make sure none of your design goes outside of the lines of the dragon, I would just advise you to clip or make a layer mask using the dragon base, whichever one is more convenient for you or is better for you, um, in order to make sure that no pixels go outside of the base because going outside of the base gets your skin instantly rejected. Um, the second most important rule is that you absolutely cannot alter the line art and shadow layers of the dragon. Um, when you finish your design, you will need to clip the original shadow and line art layer of the dragon above your entire design. Um, I'm not sure why the Flight Rising staff decided that they needed this, but you have to do it if you want your design to be set to be accepted. So just make sure you don't change the line art or shadow layers, and remember to make them visible before you submit the design. You can, however, change the hue and saturation. So if you don't want the lines or shadows to be too obvious on your skin design, or maybe it'll disrupt your overall design. Um, you can change the color of the line arts or shadows so that it looks better when placed on top of your design and that way it doesn't stand out too too much. But remember that the line art and the shadow layer must always be visibly darker than the design underneath it. So no matter how cool it is, you can't turn your line art white or make the shadows lighter to turn your design into some sort of negative artwork or something because that's another way to get your design instantly rejected by the Flight Rising staff. Finally, the most important thing is that the final image you submit as your skin design must be a transparent image that is 350 by 350 pixels in size. Uh, when you download the file from Flight Rising itself, the file itself will be 750 by 750. So when you export your design, just make sure you change the size back to back down to 350 by 350 and make sure to hide the layers with the dragon with, with the base of the dragon on it so that you only have the tra the transparent image of your final design showing um as your skin design. Um, you don't need to include the dragon, just your skin design with the shadow and line art layer clipped on top of your design. Finally, there are some other miscellaneous rules that I think are pretty self-explanatory, such as don't use copyrighted materials to make your skin designs. Uh, don't try to use your skin designs to promote political or religious agendas. Um, your skin designs must be of your own creation, etc, etc. Um, although most of these rules are pretty much self-explanatory, it probably won't be won't hurt to familiarize yourselves with these rules as well. So I've included the link in the description box below, but for the most part, you should be able to create your own skin designs using the guidelines that I've listed so far in this video. Now, before you submit your design to the staff for review, you should make sure to check the percentage coverage of your skin design to see if you should submit it as a skin. So um, a skin which is above 30% or an accent. So 30% or below. And I believe you can do it in a few art programs, but I've included a simple guide on how to do percentage checking um, in the description box below, the first of which will use Photoshop, and it's a simple guide by Nikomata on Flight Rising, and the second one is the official percentage checking guide by Flight Rising. I would just follow Nikomata's guide because the official Flight Rising one just makes it a lot more complicated than it has to be, but you can read both of them just to be absolutely certain. Again, I find Nikomata's guide a lot more easier to follow, but um, the only thing that you really need to pay attention is whether your skin has a percentage coverage over 30% or at 30% and below, because it will affect which blueprint you'll have to buy in order to print skin. So once you've figured out the percentage coverage of your skin, go to custom skins and under shop, 
he, uh, go to the custom skins under the shop subheader and click buy blueprints and you'll be brought to a page where you can buy blueprints. Um, if your skin design has a percentage coverage over 30%, you should buy the skin blueprint. And alternatively, if your skin design has a percentage coverage of 30% or below, then you should buy the accent blueprint. If you would like to print a single copy of multiple different skins, then it is more advisable to buy the bundle pack as you would save a bit of gems. And alternatively, if you would like to print multiple copies of the same skin, then you should buy the multi-copy packs instead. Once you've brought your blueprints, you can then click over to upload submissions and um, select the blueprint that you'd like to use. Type in the name of your skin and select the breed, uh, gender, and upload the appropriate file, image file as well. If you are printing a skin that you've submitted before, you can find it under select skin. Um, just double check to make sure you've got the right name, files, and blueprints and everything, and then click submit order. Now your skin will be submitted to the flight writing staff for review and you should get an automatic message in your inbox letting you know about your submission details as well. Um, it usually takes around three to five days for the staff to review your skin submission. It might take more if like they're particular to be, uh, particularly busy, such as after, um, f after festivals where people are printing their rejected submissions. But, um, at which point after the time they will either approve your submission or reject it. So if your skin submission is approved, you'll receive another direct message with, you know, how many copies of the skin that you've ordered attached um, as items in the mail itself. Um, if your submission is rejected, you'll receive a message returning the blueprint you've used and letting you know the reason why it was rejected and at this point, just adjust the skin submission with the staff's feedback and resubmit it until it's approved. And there you have it. Um, you should be good to go to begin designing and submitting your skins and accents to Flight Rising. Um, if you have any more questions regarding how to like market and sell your skins to other Flight Rising users, um, I don't know, I might do another video like that if a lot of people really want me to do a follow-up to this video. But if you have any more questions regarding the rules and guidelines when it comes to submitting skin designs, then feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. And with that said, this is the end of my video and I hope to see you in the next video whenever that may be. See ya!